My newest irresponsible purchase, this 2007 Porsche 911 Turbo. And from here, it looks pretty good. I just bought this 911 Turbo for $45,000. And that would be a smoking deal if it had an engine in it. Okay, so technically it did come with an engine. In fact, the old owner spent $150,000 building this 911 Turbo to 1,000 horsepower, only to have a rod break and go through the block 200 miles after it was finished. So what's next? It's up to us to bring this Porsche back to life. I've spent the last few weeks buying parts on parts on parts. And not only that, I already have the perfect low mileage 911 turbo engine ready to go in the car. Not long ago, I pulled this engine out of another 911 turbo that looked a lot like that one, actually. We've got the car. We've got the parts. We even have the perfect sponsor for this project and our friends at Avalon King. The only thing left to do now is get to work. Yeah, we got to do something about that. If you guys remember from last episode, we picked this car up and the spoiler was level. Then we got the car home and it was not. These 911 turbos have hydraulically actuated spoilers. They raise and lower at a certain speed. It's a really awesome feature when it works. The problem is they fail all the time. And if you can see right there, this one's covered in hydraulic fluid. This is the side that lost pressure. Obviously our issue's right there. It's not super common to fix the actual hydraulics. It's not cheap, it's complicated. So instead I grabbed a set of these. Solid aluminum adjustable mounts. There's nothing to fail on these. They were relatively cheap at just over 300 bucks and supposedly they're pretty easy to install. Which all sounds a lot better than having to adjust your spoiler by hand. And even the pump itself is pretty just leaky and nasty. The biggest issue we're gonna have here is this side of the spoiler being all the way down. There's a big spring in this actuator that pulls it down when there's no hydraulic pressure to keep it up. I'm hoping we can rig this up, power this pump, and the system has just enough life left in it to raise this one more time. I thought you was a pro. What about this in any way, shape, or form screams pro, all right? Come on. <laughs> Is that all it gave me? That's all we got. That's not good. I think we're in some trouble here. We're gonna have to force this wing up, jam something in there, and then fight against this spring pressure to twist this wing off. It's not gonna be fun. I think we're gonna be able to make a sandwich out of this level here. We're off to a rocking start. What we need to do is grab that hole right there and twist. That's gonna let us spin off this hydraulic ram from the spoiler. Spoiler comes off, we put our other things on, we're good to go. I thought I was just gonna be able to stick something like this in there, twist it off. We all know where this is going at this point. It obviously didn't work. What we actually need is a spanner wrench like this for a coilover, but just much, much smaller. If I'm being honest, I picked the spoiler to do first because I figured it'd be easy. We'll get on the right track, we'll knock something off, and then move on to the harder stuff. Yeah, let's go hunt down a wrench. A week later, we have the smallest spanner wrench on the planet in hand, and imagine that, the spoiler came right off. With our old hydraulic system out of the way, now it's time for the easy part. It took all of three seconds to bolt down the aluminum bases, insert the spoiler mounts, lock them down, and boom. No more leaks, no more outdated hydraulic system. Now the spoiler sits high, it looks amazing, and according to the most accurate level we have at the shop, we nailed the alignment. Being that this car is not gonna be a race car like my purple car, there is one more thing we have to do to make sure we don't have any lights on the dash. I'm gonna hack up this wiring harness just a little bit. Our plan here is to pull a little trick on the car and confuse it into thinking it has a functioning hydraulic system, and of course, you guys and I know it does not. I think that'll trick the stupid machine. At this point, it just feels good to win one before AI takes over. Now it's time to have some fun. We gotta remove this hacked up stock fuel tank from the car and install this unmodified factory tank with all new fuel lines. These aftermarket lines are way more than we need. And now that the car is going back to stock turbos, they gotta go so we can get the car as close to original as possible.
One of the things I loved about working on my 911 turbo was how simple they made everything to drop down. It seems like it holds up for the front as well. If my brain was functioning properly when I took all this apart, the idea is the brakes, the coilovers, all this stuff, it's gonna stay up. The rotor, the hub, the rack, all that's gonna come down with the full front subframe. I think we're loose. I wanna see how many things you actually forget. There's always something. I genuinely think I got it all because it's pretty simple, but we'll find out. There's not a chance we're counting this loose hanging fuel line, which is not something I forgot because it is disconnected. Trust me, I am no expert, but if my math is correct, that will put us at... You're right. I'm right what? On this. Say yeah. it. You're flexing too much right now. The fact that you just put one push together, it doesn't make you a professional yet, okay? Oh, I'm an amateur. The Hardcore <laughs> amateur, but an amateur that forgot... Nothing, zero. There we go. Let's go ahead and get to what we actually came for. Last episode, we did drain this gas tank, got all the ED5 out of it, so it should be really light. All right, maybe we didn't empty it as good as I thought. All right, still hung up. I was hoping the wiring harness would drop down with it. That is still connected to the top. But I think we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way, by disconnecting things. I guess it really isn't held up. As far as I can tell, everything up here on the top is pretty free. Back up in the air. I think it's just a matter of getting it at the right angle. There we go. That's the only one we can get out right now. If this were a stock line, it would go right here into the top of the hat. The return goes into the side. Don't know how we're gonna get that. I think that's gonna have to come with the tank. Answer a question for me. Okay. How do we make the same mistakes every time we work on a car? Um, it's actually a pretty good question. You remember the demon? When we pulled the gas tank down, we forgot something. Oh, Tano. You actually have to fill gas tanks. There's this big hose that goes into the side of them. If you're dropping one, it probably helps to disconnect it. Honestly, can't tell how this is connected. Should probably take a look at the tank we have over there. On the tank in the car, I can't get a great look at it, but it doesn't feel like there's any type of clamp. The best I can tell, it kind of just pushes in. I don't see how that wouldn't leak, though I suppose it is just gravity fed. So if there's some kind of internal seal, maybe that's what we're working with. I think. We still can't get all the way out. Oh, there we go. Now I can see very easily why it doesn't leak. That is some deep penetration. What are you laughing at? For <laughs> why are you smiling about it? Come on, man. Now, if we're lucky, this tank's going to fall out of here. Directly on my head, actually. Do you want to take a shower? E85 shower? I prefer not to. What are we doing here? Well, that's close. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's got more gas in it than I thought. For a split second there, I thought we were in trouble. The inside of these fuel tanks are so complicated, unlike ceramic coating your car with Avalon King Armor Shield 9. I'm incredibly thrilled to have our good friends at Avalon King partnering with us through this entire build. Avalon King makes top-notch ceramic coatings that are designed to be applied by everyday car enthusiasts like you and I. Every build I finish up here at the shop gets the full Avalon King treatment. Trust me, guys, it shows. Not only that, but considering I spend pretty much every dime I have on my builds, I'm sure some of you guys can relate. I also love that Avalon King is one of the most affordable ceramic coating kits out there. One kit is all you need to coat most small to mid-sized cars. It got the job done on the ZR1 here. I have no doubt the 911 Turbo is going to be a one kit job too. It's literally years of paint protection in one small black box. On the topic of these black boxes, Avalon King has sent us a couple kits to give away to you guys. Go down in the comments right now and let me know what you would ceramic coat. If you want one of these Avalon King Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating kits, two weeks from now I'm going to pick three of you guys and send you a free ceramic coating kit. One more time, thanks a 
ton to our longtime channel friends at Avalon King for sponsoring this entire 9-11 Turbo project. Make sure you guys stay tuned until next episode to see what we're working on. Last episode, we removed this billet dual fuel pump hanger from Silly Rabbit Motorsports. It is a nice assembly, but the install wasn't done very well. So many of these hoses were just popping off. You look at them the wrong way, they're done. One of my biggest pain points on project cars, dealing with fuel issues. The last thing I want to do is be chasing fuel lines popping off left and right. So we simplified it going with the OEM setup. Not to mention we're going to recoup like a thousand bucks selling this stuff. With the questions about the tank pretty much settled, it should be as simple as throwing the other one back up in here. The one issue we're going to have here is the fact that the wiring has been hacked up a bit. I'm going to have to go double check on my car, but this looks like the OEM wiring. It's been modified to a four pin connector that connects over here. There's also this massive connector here that's in no way, shape or form OEM. I believe this is its own harness. We need to make this plug into that. You guys already know where this is going. I don't have this connector. I don't even know if you can buy it. One thing we have going for us though, this harness has more than enough length to reach way up through the fuel pump access panel hole. That way we can install our tank, put all that stuff back in here, and then worry about repinning the OEM connector once we're able to find one. And that's the last of our fuel system. We got the parts, we got the holes, let's install a fuel tank. There's our new feed. There is our new return. And now we should have a ton of reassembly. consider this a major job though it was definitely a tedious job everything went pretty smooth we didn't break anything which is always important and now other than that one connector that we still have to source on the top of the fuel hat from here forward the car's pretty much done obviously on most cars saying the front end's done will be a pretty significant achievement not on this we got major issues we're missing like a slightly important part of the car slight Keep this between you and me and uh, all them. You guys know that old saying about crime not paying something along those lines? I think that's the case here. To be fair, the line is only missing out of this car because I stole it from my purple car once we had the issues. Cause of the missing tube aside, we did have to order a new one from Porsche. I was pleasantly surprised to see it was only $107. Not a uh, very Porsche-like, is it? I know, it's weird. I thought it was like four grand. Being that the theft didn't work out, I suppose it's time to move on to more, uh, traditional means of auto mechanicry. We've only tackled half this new fuel line job. We still have to do the rear half. That'll lead to more new parts, which leads to more new parts, which takes us to a used part. If it doesn't make sense now, it will shortly. Up until right about now, I was unsure if I had all the fuel lines I needed. The diagrams for Porsche were fairly unclear. Luckily we do, sort of. Back here, we have the end of the road for those lines we ran all the way up from the tank. This one here goes into the engine, no big deal. This one's finished. This one up here, however, runs into the stock fuel filter. If you remember though, over here we had an aftermarket fuel system. There was a regulator mounted right there. We don't have that stock fuel filter. No big deal, order up a stock one. Problem solved, right? Yeah, not quite. The feed side of it from the lines, it's just a quick connect fitting there, no problem, done. Now the other side of it, it's a threaded fitting that needs to go into this. Even a full-fledged YouTube mechanic such as myself knows that's not gonna work. All right, cool. So we need to order one more line. If that big, long, girthy one we threw away a couple minutes ago is only $107, there's no way this little limp dick line is expensive at all, right? 200 bucks for something that I assumed was part of the fuel filter assembly and have definitely thrown away before, not gonna work. Spin $200 or dumpster dive. Spin $200 or dumpster dive. 
Kind of a no-brainer. We called up Porsche and ordered a new line. Come on, guys. There's not a chance I'm spending 30 minutes digging through a scrap dumpster for a $200 line. Plus, on a car of this caliber, you just can't beat fresh new parts. From the factory, from good old Porsche, our fuel filter is designed to mount right there on the side of the coolant reservoir with a little black bracket. Specifically, this little black bracket. But in typical modified car fashion, of course, they hacked it up just a little bit to mount that aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. Just remember, if you take on a project like this, I guess you would call it a demodification restoration, get used to doing things like this, replacing an otherwise good coolant reservoir just so you can mount something properly. got the car ready for the engine. Now we need to do the opposite. Fernando, no context whatsoever. What do we install first? Stock parts or aftermarket parts? Of course aftermarket. Aftermarket, yes. the go fast stuff. Yes. Literally the go fast bits. New bypass valves for a Focus ST. Fo Wait, what? I thought they were supposed to do them upgrades. This is a Porsche. Basically the same thing as the Focus ST, apparently. Anyway, last episode, when the engine went up to any performance, they boost leak tested it in one of these bypass valves. It's leaking internally, no bueno. So now we get to replace this dirty, old, ancient bypass valve with this fancy new thing here. Four Focus parts on a 997. Come on, man. I don't make the parts. Don't blame me. Maybe they mislabeled it. This is definitely a Porsche part. There's our old junkers there. These are some of the original bypass valves for the 997 Turbo. They're huge compared to the newer technology of these ones. It's just a really big unit. One immediate difference, obviously this one compresses here. These guys, they don't compress. I don't know exactly how these work. This is the one that wasn't technically working or is leaking. You can see the O-ring there is pretty pinched. I do greatly prefer the full face mounting surface of the newer go fast bits here. And of course, now that I got talking and forgot which one of these is actually the bad one, I suppose I'm just gonna give them away. I don't know what you're gonna do with them. Hang them in the garage. Maybe you get a good one. Maybe you can put it on your Focus ST. All you gotta do, go down in the comments and say, I want the big one. Fancy new diverter valves installed and ready to go. That's the last of the true aftermarket stuff we have to install to the engine itself. We do have a fancy new clutch in this box, which is kind of a mixed match of OEM parts, but first we gotta whip out this guy here. If you watched part one of this series, you already know that this is the oil line that comes off the oil cooler and goes down there into the bottom of the crankcase. This donor engine, it's out of an automatic car. Of course, we have to manual convert it, and that means putting this manual specific crank sensor on it. When I tried to do it for the first time, I found that it was hitting this line. They made it just a little bit different on the manual. It has another half inch, inch of clearance there to clear the crank sensor. We were incredibly lucky to find that this line was one of the parts that came with the car. While the massive line we threw away earlier was cheap, that smaller fuel line that we were hunting for earlier was fairly expensive. This average or above average line here is obscenely expensive. Lucky for us, we got away without buying it and just cleaned the metal shavings out of the old one. Now I uh, know I'm no Porsche engineer, but I feel like there may have been an easier way to do this. I don't know, like using the manual one on the auto cars too. But hey, I'm not here to design them, just break them. Huh, imagine that. Things fit perfectly when you have all the right parts. On the topic of having the correct parts, that's gonna come into play here in just another second. This right here, our old clutch. In this box, our fancy new clutch. This is known as the Sax Stage 2.5, something like that. It's a really popular clutch upgrade. You can see this one is a sprung disc and honestly, it's not in horrible shape. This one is supposed to hold a little more power. As far as I'm aware, the only difference in this clutch setup is this disc here, because if you look over here at the pressure plate, it's the same thing. Same numbers, everything. Are you ready to hold this motor's life in your hands? No. <laughs> You're gonna get a practice run. We're doing 15 foot pounds the first go around, all right? Okay. What you need to do is make sure this motor does not spin. 
at all. It's one thing I learned from me. If we spin this backwards, bad things. It can jump time, not good. Now that we've installed one very used but working order flywheel, we can install one very new clutch. Of course, we couldn't forget the premium German lube. Guys, here we are. We got our clutch on, the alignment tool in and out like butter, exactly like you want it. By no means has it been pretty this episode. Delays, wrong parts, overnight shipping galore. But at the end of the day, next episode, all we have to do is throw that transmission on and stick the drivetrain right in the car. Of course, in typical fashion, we are still waiting on that one pipe that I stole off this car originally. It did have to come from Germany, but we expedited it, so hopefully it's here ASAP. It might seem like we have a long way to go on this project, but we knocked out so much just tedious dumb stuff this time that i really think next episode we're gonna start this car for the first time is it gonna involve more overnight parts probably is there gonna be a lot of cussing definitely are we gonna break something more likely than not but we're gonna get it done i absolutely love my purple 997 turbo thousand horsepower on one of these you can't beat it but for some odd reason i'm really excited to experience a stockish one i have some really fun plans for this car when it's done but we have plenty of time to talk about that later before now we just gotta stay focused put in the work and get it done I got a level. You got a level? Yeah, I found one. The two by four, right? No, that's, no, a, no. that's a level. What? <laughs> Came for. Nice work. Nice work, man. You know, I carefully placed all that stuff on a lift. Yeah, on, right. It wouldn't be carefully. damaged. It wouldn't be lost. Carefully. You just throw it all over the you floor. You don't believe that. How weird is it like you're actually going to make the conversion from 85 to 93? That's like... Why do you keep bringing... I'm not happy about this. Yeah. Look, we're going to return this car to stock. Three videos later, we're going to be like, building the next thousand horsepower push. <laughs> You're about to nail your head on that tire, by the way. No, you know, it's perfect. The perks of being 5'3", huh? 5'3"? Mechanicry? Mechanic. That's a word, right? No, it's definitely not a word. Mechanicry? <laughs> we're dumb, not stupid. <laughs> At least that makes sense. It makes tons of sense. All right. We're dumb, so. not stupid. Okay. Is stupid worse than dumb? I don't know. <laughs>